Hello, we are Geeks Assembled, and today we are talking about a 1955 movie uh, based on a 1953 BBC serial by Nigel Neal. Um, we are talking The Quatermass Experiment. Um, it's just a shame that the BBC programme doesn't exist in its entirety, like most early BBC stuff. Uh, so we will be talking the, the movie, as I said, the 1955 movie. Um, a very influential film franchise, and it, it did really influence quite early sci-fi in, in the UK. Um, so we will go around this gathering here and get their opening thoughts on the Quatermass experiment. Um, you know what, we'll go to Jake first. Because he's never, he's never seen the movie before, so over to you, Jay. I loved it. I absolutely adore Hammer Horror old sci fi stuff, and this was so good. Even considering it's like, all, oh, shut up, Alice, all these years ago, it was so dark and atmospheric and creepy. The way it was shot, the effects, I adored it, and it's making me want to go and watch all the other ones. And I can really tell, because I did a lot of research after I watched it, how it inspired Doctor Who, in a way. Because it had a lot of Doctor Who things in it, that in, like, I can see where Sidney Newman got the idea from. Because Coulter is really like a Doctor-like figure. And like some of the tropes are later used in Doctor Who episodes, like the Ark in Space, the Green Death, Megalos, because he's a giant cactus, he's a cactus octopus person. It was so good. I don't think I'd like it. It flew by for me. I thought it was really fast paced. Lots of act, like 50s action. It adored it. Loved it. The end. Thank you, Jake. I knew you'd like it. Um, let's go to Beef Dad. Well, of course, I saw the original, mm -hmm. all of it. I was five years old. It scared the living day that's out of me. Um, and what you've also got to remember is, uh, yeah, they, a lot of it, um, happens, the, the sort of, the, the big ending happens at Westminster Cathedral. And it was just before the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. So that's one of the reasons why they used the cathedral, because there was all sorts of scaffolding up and everything ready for the uh, the coronation and filming the coronation. Um, the original um, was much better than the film. Um, yeah, it's dark, it's creepy, it's scary. Um, the whole use of the uh, original rocket and them being the first people in space, when you consider it was another, what, 10 or no, um, eight, nine, eight or nine years before the first person goes into space from Earth. And um, oddly enough, the crash that they do in the television series was much better. You didn't in the tele in the film. You ended up with a a no uh, the nose in the ground and the rocket sort of basically standing up. Um, in the television, it was more sensible. It crashed down and uh, when they opened it they just opened a door in the television one a door opened and a ramp came out and the one survivor walked down the ramp 
and that, that was extraordinary. And it was much creepier, to be perfectly honest, at that point than it was in the film. And the thing that everybody is going to say they loved was the creature and when it took over and it, it, um, it was on the scaffolding at Westminster Abbey. And oddly enough, the one on the tele on, on the on the film was half as impressive as the one in the television series. The one in the television series was much bigger, much creepier, had many, many more arms that were hanging down and that they were all having to avoid and they didn't the hammer didn't do it as well i don't think as they did in the original series thank you beef dad okay well you never you never can beat originals but so so it only i think there's only two episodes what is in existence of the tv series now i think um but uh, we'll, we'll move over to, well, oh, Beef Dad's got it there. Uh, we'll move over to Susie. Hello, Susie. Sorry, I had to find the computer mouse. Okay. <laughs> um, I was also mid-drink. Let's see, what did I think about this? I have a special fondness for films during this time period, um, also TV during this time period, because it's the time when television first started. So the actors came from a theater background and they, most of them had proper training back then. So this, not being a Brit, this reminds me very much of early Twilight Zone, the William Shatner episode with the plane, you know, the guy with glasses breaking in the library, that whole thing. I mean, it's really beautifully acted with the exception of the, the female, main female character. She was a little too ditzy for me. But uh, the rest, I mean, come on, how stupid can you be? And, uh, but you know, it was, it was, it was a little slow for me. I, until we got to, uh, we had to watch it in four parts. So until I got to the third part of it, um, it, it, it picked up then. And I think, I got the impression that they killed off the monster too quickly because it was really scary and they didn't want to scare the people that much. Um, but, but yeah, this is, it was really, it was good to see and I was really appreciative of it. Um, but it, for me, it took a little while to get into it. And I, in, in its defense, I have been watching a mystery, mystery science theater quarantine-a-thon. <laughs> and so, all I could tell, now when I see a black and white movie, all I could picture are three little robots. So that's where my brain is going. <laughs> so it took me a while to get over that and actually focus on the flick. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Susan. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, for turning me on to Quarantinathon. And uh, it, it, but no, it's good. It's worth a, it's worth a watch. I think everybody should watch it for the historical historicalness historical impact that I believe this had. And I didn't even know about the Doctor Who parallels, um, but of course those are all incredibly important to all of us, particularly. And I would, I would say if you've never seen it, go see it once. I, I, it, and, and I really think it would be, the first two parts would be better with three little robots in front of it. <laughs> okay, end of first thoughts. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to the love seat. Um, um, yeah, I've, I've seen this in repeats and unfortunately, again, maybe I'm wrong, but the, I've, I've seen it in different formats and different ways and I don't know if they've edited or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, you can tell that this influenced Doctor Who a little bit, um, which is fine. I mean, I'm not against it. There are better versions. There are the there are some that are a little bit more modern, or as uh, Beef Dad said, it's executed better. 
but that's the other thing. I mean, he was no, talking about the TV show. right. But I'm saying that even so, I mean, the technology is so much better now. They probably could do a super wonderful job with it. Um, I mean, again, even though the themes are still there, uh, you know, the sci-fi from the fifties to now should have changed a little bit anyway, but I mean, it'll look, it would look a lot better if they did it now. They probably won't, but I saw the 79 version and I saw the 2005 version. Um, but like I said, it has to start somewhere and I think they did a good job and that's the other thing. I mean, you know, the earlier shows, it's a lot more air, you know, it's a lot more atmospheric because they didn't have tons of special effects and tons of camera angles and computers to make things look better and all that. So they had to, they had to rely more on, you know, actual acting and, and, you know, really like William Hartnell said, you know, you're on a smaller screen. You're not, you know, so you have to remember that you're, it's a lot tighter. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good idea. It's, you know, most of them are good stories. It's just a question of, the execution and the budget. And unfortunately, the lower the budget, the usually the worse the special effects look. But I mean, it's a great idea. I've always liked it. It did influence Doctor Who uh, somewhat. Um, and then as the decades go on, it you know they come up with better effects, better budget, better ideas, or better execution of it. And uh, you know, the same thing, just like with Outer Limits, the original version and the Twilight Zone. Um, it still has a lot of good ideas and still has a lot of good acting and hopefully people will watch this and not just special effects only. So, before Susan starts, the budget for this was 42,000 pounds. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, not very much, but it, um, I, I, I can tell you that one of the ways that it influenced Doctor Who was at the the ambassadors of death the recovery rocket they couldn't get into it and that was directly lifted out of this um out of the movie version not the tv telly version because there was a, there wasn't a ramp that came down and the uh the uh characters were stuck in inside the rocket um it, it's it's pretty amazing what science fiction goes, to, the 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 places that science fiction goes to, and this one goes to a really strange place. It, it's this this is this alien creature who somehow infiltrated the spaceship and uh, and took over one of the one of the astronauts, and then the other two, uh, you know, astronauts weren't. Uh, weren't alive at the end of that that encounter and they had been absorbed and then this this one had had moved uh into this the act the character was uh good uh karoon and uh karoon went through you know hell trying to get his his this alien creatures needs met you know he he went and ate all the all the rats in the lab and then he uh and then he ate all the 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 animals in the london zoo which was amazing and the london zoo scene was just wild and then there was i mean he he was trying to eat all the people in london then He'd, he'd, he'd gotten tired of all the, the critters and started eating people. And Karun went through that and there was, I mean, the, the, the first, the first like impression of Quatermass was, you know, what, what a, what a dashing guy. But then, you know, you, you kind of get the feeling that he's a scientist, but then at the end, you know that he's not a really good scientist. He's just all about, you know, he doesn't care that his his, his experiment failed. He just wants to do more. And that's, that's really whack. 
And then Jack Warner, um, I'm not entirely sure if it's the same Jack Warner, but you know, Jack Warner was in it. And then uh, as his, as the inspector Lomas, Lomax, and um, there was Lionel Jeffries as Blake, and then there's Sam Kidd in it. Lots of really top-notch yeah, actors. Yeah, but Jet, Jet Warner, beef that'll know, evening all. <laughs> Dicks and the Dot Green. Dicks and the Dot Green, okay, gotcha. Anyway, um, so that was a, that was a really interesting cast. And um, I enjoyed watching the movie, and that's that's my bit. Thank you, Susan. Uh, who, uh, Ethan. Hey, oh, thanks for that. Yeah, um, this is my first time watching it. Um, I enjoyed it. I really liked it. Um, I've been watching like a lot of old movies recently. Like um, I've just watched The Great Race, as you know, and then I watched Some Like It Hot. I love old black and white films like that, and. I, I I remembered what this was, actually, because I was trying to think, why do I know that name, Quatermass? And I think it's, it was mentioned in years ago, there was a thing like 100 Greatest Horror Movies or Moments, but I think it was one of the other ones, Quatermass and the Pit. Is that one of them? Yeah. So, which I need to see all the other ones, but yeah. I get, it, it, this, you could see the influence of Doctor Who in this. So, and the monster at the end. So I need to see the other one, the other version of it that came before this. But you could saw, I wonder if the, the monster, in a way, it reminded me of a Dalek. So I wonder <laughs> if Sidney Newman actually looked at this thing and went, oh, what if I could use that, but make it smaller? <laughs> like a Dalek, or like a crinoid? <laughs> Fit it into a big pepper pot <laughs> with a plunger. <laughs> That'll be all right, <laughs> but yeah, I I stick I love... balls to the side of it. Was that? yeah, stick balls to the side of it. There you are. But I enjoyed it. I love. This. I I mentioned this before about black and white films. When they do creepy horror, like Hammer horror or Gothic or whatever, they really get it right because it reminds me of a movie called Dead of Night, which is a if any of you have ever, never seen it. Absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best horror movies ever. And it's one of the creepiest. Because it involves a very creepy, sick dummy. <laughs> and it, in black and white, it's terrifying. Um, uh, but yeah, I love it. And like Nosferatu as well. It just nails it. I love the old black and white stuff. And even like Doctor Who, when it gets horror right. Uh, and even the music. The music that they did back then is just creepy. It's just so blood-curdling. You know... Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I loved how um, <laughs> you you can't help but do a little smile when they say, "Oh, these are the first men who have gone into space." So you think back then they didn't know what to expect. You know all the science fiction stories that came out of it. Um, yeah, it's uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a really it's interesting to know that this influenced, you know, say like um, movies like Alien or. Um, space odyssey and stuff like that that's what it did it influenced all those movies so you think wow i'm watching it yeah i could see it um but yeah no i think those are my own thoughts i really liked it i would i would love to see more of it i love these kind of movies black and white stuff as you know and yeah really enjoyed it thanks for the recommendation on that one thanks ethan now we've saved the best for last yeah <laughs> Over to you. Who, me? Yeah, yeah, you. Well, what would you like to know, darling oh. heart? Yeah, I'm not your darling heart. <laughs> what, would you like, what would you like to know? I'd like to know your opening thoughts. Okay, my opening thoughts were it was dull, it was boring, and uh, I couldn't wait for it to finish. Jake oh, is talking a load of nonsense that it absolutely flies by. It doesn't. It's so slow. I agree with Susie. At the beginning, it is dreadfully slow. And it only picks up when it gets to part three. And then it starts getting creepy with the guy and he's walking around. And he meets that girl, uh, the little girl. And, it, and then it starts getting creepy. But the first two episodes are a dull fest. 
bit like these casts. <laughs> no, what <are> you? <laughs> you know, they are. A, it is a dull fest. For the first two episodes, it's so dull. It's so boring. I mean, yes, the effects are good, and when the um, when the house is the house at the beginning kind of falls apart from the ship coming down. That's that's a good effect, and it's got some good effects. And I like the ending, but I do agree. I think Susie said it as well. Susie's speaking the most sense here tonight, which is the first, it's probably the first time and the last time, dear viewers, I'm going to say that. <laughs> but at the end, the monster was so easily just got rid of. They should have made more of that. Should have made more of it at the end. So yeah, so, look, it didn't need to be as long as it was. It was only eight minutes. Hey? It was only about 80 minutes. Yeah, it didn't need to be that. It all, all it needed to be was a 20-minute special. Oh, God, here we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> get the octopus in. <laughs> wham, bam. Your uncle's your nan. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <sighs> there you go. Oh, my yeah, I don't know. He's, he's never been the same since he came out, had that break and he's come back. He's just not the same. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Okay. Moving on. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, it's, it is a cult classic and the sequels as well uh, are regarded as highly as this one is as well. Um, and the influences to, of most genres of sci-fi, you've got to look back to the quick, to Quatermass, really, um, and, and and the cast, as I say, we've mentioned Jack Warner, we've mentioned um, well, I forgot the actor's name, not Brian Brian Donnelly, Don Levy as Quatermass. He played Quatermass in the next film, uh, but he doesn't play it in the third, as as far as I remember. But um, yeah, it's eerie, eerie, um, creepy, and as I say, you can see parts of this movie. What's what have been used in other shows, movies after the fifties. So people have taken from it and taken from it and made successes from them. Um, you've even just to interrupt a second. There we go. Go on. Is this Stop a it. thing that David Tennant did before he David, became the Doctor? David Tennant. Oh, would you let me? I was just going to go into that because <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching that. That was quite a mess, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, you finished? <laughs> Not yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let's sing a song. Finished. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, you can go now. There was a, a live a live TV event in 2005, Quatermass and mm -hmm. the Quatermass Experiment. David, starring David Tennant and Matt Gatiss, if I remember rightly. They broadcast it live. So that's what you're thinking about. Yep. That's it. Now you can you go back to sleep, Alid. Um, yeah, you've even you've even got you've even got uh, Dame Thora Head in this as the drunk. Um, she was but, wonderful. I forgot about her. She was yeah, great. Yeah. Um, as I said, Lionel Jeffrey's a brilliant character actor. Rosie. Rosie. Yeah, Rosie the drunk. <laughs> but um, yeah. It's and the black and white. Oh, I've always said black and white is the best. It, it's atmospheric. This is why all early TV looks so great and it feels so great. Mm. And it's been mentioned before, you know, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, classic Who. It's best in black and white because it just lends more to it. And it, it, this is one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever made, in my opinion, of its era. So that's my opening thoughts. We'll go for favourite moments now. Um, Beef Dad, over to you. I like the crash. Um, I like the crash in the television series, and I like—I quite like the crash in this. It was different. But as I say, the, with the television series, I think it worked better. Um, uh, the 
another another favourite moment was in the um, laboratory where the drool from it was eating creatures, e eating rats and things and growing. And of course he was <clears throat> out eating the animals at the London Zoo. Mm. Um, which I thought they, they did that v very well as well. Um, the bit with the little girl, that was absolutely magical, scary as hell, because you were terrified about what was going to happen to her. And of course, that was Jane Asher in one of her first ever appearances in the film. And uh, bless her, she was good. Beef down. Did it that that scene on the canal with the, with Jane Asher? That I don't know if you, if you've thought of it, but that was so so similar to the Frankenstein scene with the little girl. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to mention that as well. Yeah, yeah, Frankenstein. yeah, absolutely. Um, and then of course there was the when you've got the creature at um. Westminster Abbey and one of the reasons why people were finding certainly when they did the television one why people found that so very very creepy and very very scary is because the it was just before the coronation of Elizabeth at Westminster Abbey um, uh, yeah, uh, in the television one, they tried a couple of things, um, all of which failed, and then they did the electric and basically took down all the electricity in London, uh, everything turned off, and all the power was put through to the scaffolding that the creature was on. But as I say, the creature in the television series was much bigger, much creepier. I mean, you know, as, as has been said, this, this looks like a, but basically it's, it's a Dalek without the, um, without his car. Um, and yeah, the, the original was just so bloody scary. I remember, going to bed the night after, uh, going to bed that night after having watched that and waking up in the middle of the night because I had a nightmare about it. And that was the, the, the one that they used for the television was so much scarier and so much bigger. And yeah, they, they did a they did a good job considering that they had to take the television one and then redo it. So yeah, it's it's rather typical of the period. Thank you, Beef Dad. Uh, Nick. I absolutely adored the bit of the little girl and the way he decapitated that doll because it just shows how, how stupid kids are sometimes. They're like, oh, have tea with me, you really scary man who's obviously going to bloody murder me. But I love that bit. I love, 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 I cannot express how much I love the, de the dead body effect of the skull and the way it all disintegrated and stuff. Oh, my God. How good was that effect? It was oh perfect. And I'd love, I'd love, 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 love if BBC took this up and did a little reboot series of it. Like a rebooted court month. Oh big finish, come on, big finish, come along and give this twelve box sets with fucking river song. I don't care. I just want more quite a mess. Cause I, I was watching this like I watched it quite late at night and I think that helped with the atmosphere of it. 
And then all I was thinking about was my own ideas what I could do with Quake and Mass and stuff. Then I was thinking of crossovers you can do with Doctor Who. It's, it's, it's ticking all these boxes round and round and round. Come big finish, do the Quake Mass files, volume one. How good would that be to have it come back? I didn't think I'd love it as much as I, I have. I, I found it superb. That's all I'm going to say. Otherwise, I'll spend a whole cast just talking about how I loved it. What What's happened to the real Jake? I don't know. Where's the Jake? There's no <laughs> There's Someone... no Unicorns. There's no Disney flicks. Oh, no, that's how I lead. That's how I lead that. Um... Oh, Disney Plus guy now. Uh, well, as soon as you're... The, oh, she's gone again. Susie, what's your favourite moment? Oh, well, you know, Jake mentioned one that I had forgotten to mention, and the one with the bit with the little girl, and, and, and Beef just mentioned it too. Most of my favourite moments happened in part two, because, I mean, part three and four, because the first two parts I kept screaming, you're kidding me, right? Especially when the girlfriend goes and gets him out of the hospital. And I'm like, who does this? So anyway, um, uh, the acting was good. The ch most chilling part, well, I, yeah, I had forgotten. I blacked out the whole killing and the animals at the zoo, but that was well done. Cause it could have been, had this been done today, that could have been done in a very gory R rated way but it wasn't, and I, I liked the way it, that it was done because it was, I always maintain that things can be more scary, less is more. Um, if you, all of the, the battle scenes and the murder scenes and things that go over the top and gross stuff, you don't need that to terrify people at all. And uh, that, was, that was actually brilliant. And the monster was, eh, okay. Um, I guess I'm just used to, even back then, I'm used to more of a monster. And I'm glad that Beef Dad said that the, um, the original monster had more tentacle thingies and, and it was scarier. And I wish that that would have been so cool if there had been a ramp on the plane and the guy walked out because he just kind of fell out. But yeah, that would have been so cool. Um, but uh, basically, it's good to see it once, um, but I... I wouldn't say that, other than the fact that the actors obviously were all really good and, and what everyone else has said, I, I mean, there wasn't anything that really else knew that I have to say that other people haven't said yet. So that's my thoughts. Thank you, Susie. Um, let's go to the man of the moment then. Alid, is that right, an interesting, so, that an interesting uh -oh. guy? Yeah, why? I don't like it. Well, you're not wearing it, are you? I just don't like it. It doesn't suit you. <laughs> right. So what do you want? Favourite moments? If you've got any, if you haven't, I'll go on to someone else. Well, I'll tell you a bit that I didn't like. And it's what Susie mentioned, which was when they killed all the animals. I got it. I didn't like that. And I didn't like seeing the animals in those tiny little cages. Well, that was I a thought zoo. that was cruel. That was a zoo. Yeah, yeah, no, but I've seen better zoos than that, you know, where they've got big open well, spaces. Right. Well, they were stuck in those little tiny, and there was nothing in there for them. I thought that was a bit cruel. It was 1955. It's still yeah. cruel. Still, it, it was, was cruel then, it's cruel now. Well, I've got nothing against zoos. I love zoos. I go to zoos all the time, but... Keeping them in that environment was cruel. Well, that's how they did it in those days. And then they ki and then they and then he killed them. Yeah, but Susie didn't, Susie didn't say she didn't like that. She said that was well done. Better. It was well done, but he's right about. Oh, at least the he fact didn't see the gore. Well, this is what Susie said. Yeah, but I still didn't like the idea of them all being killed. They didn't need to kill them all. He didn't need to kill all the animals. I would have wished that they didn't do that in the film. It wasn't one of my favourite moments, but it was well done, unfortunately. But they didn't need to do it. Why not? Why not? It's well, actually, it's, I was reading about this, it's, it, it's classified more as a horror flick instead of more of a, of a sci-fi flick. And for a horror movie, this is pretty right on target. Well, it is in the 50s. Yeah, it's, it's a horror sci-fi movie. 
Yeah. But I think it does get better in the last two parts. The first two parts are really, really rather dull. Yeah, but it's only in parts because... I disagree. Daily motion, but it's usually, it's usually a full-length film. It was just split into four, that was on. Yeah, yeah, but it, it kind of picks up on Daily Motion when it gets to the third part. Mm-hmm. And then it gets and then it gets interesting right. when yeah, you, you know the you guys go going round. We move on now. You finished? No, not yet. Did, I'm finished yet. Yeah. What was and, Alan, Hey, what was interesting about what the movie? You said it gets interesting. What was interesting? I don't right, know. You've got it, you've got it, you've got it. <laughs> well, it gets more interesting as. When he's going around, he's, it's rather creepy and the mu- when the music's playing and it's kind of creepy then and towards the end where you've got the octopus thing. It's a shame that they didn't use it to its fullest potential. But yeah, other than that, it's just... And I, yeah, the, fir- the problem is the first two parts are just so boring. By the time it gets going, you've already lost interest. But it yes, does pick but, up if it started off. It, if they cut yeah. some of the f- the first part out, right? The first part, the first two parts only is about forty minutes long. Yeah, it doesn't need to be forty. That does not need to be forty minutes. Forty minutes long is not long. It is long. Forty minutes is a long time. No, it's not a long it's time. Not. Yeah, uh, it is. Bollocks. Forty it's minutes not. is a long time. It is not. Yes, it is. Considering normal programming. Come on, come on, Jake. You watched um, Enchanted, and that felt like more than forty minutes, didn't it? When yeah. when something is slow, it feels like more than forty well, minutes. Enchanted was Enchanted was longer than forty minutes. Yeah, but it felt like longer. What, no, but you felt like about? no, but he would have said he would have only given Enchanted like fifteen minutes. Anyway, he would have done that. Yeah, because there anything you like, Alan? Was there anything in the movie that you did like? <laughs> um, not particularly. Right, oh, I just didn't right, care over for it. <laughs> I just didn't. I just didn't care for it. I just didn't engage with it. Okay. I mean, I didn't dislike it. I didn't go, oh well, I hate this. I just thought, right. okay, this is a bit. There's nothing special about this. There's nothing that stands out. There's nothing that's really great about it. I just felt it was like, meh, okay. And that was it. Okay. Not that I, I didn't hate it. So we're going to go on for 10 minutes saying this. Can, can we move on? <laughs> what about 40? I'm glad that you watched it and came on and said that because that's the whole point of this group. People watch stuff, they may like it, they may not, they come and they say it. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. know, no unicorns. That's another thing. No unicorns. <laughs> no unicorns. <laughs> no about that. Um, where was this? No unicorns look, died in the making of this movie. <laughs> look, we sat through the mask, and I'm telling you now, they had Cher in it, and she <laughs> hardly sang at all. The mask. The mask, <laughs> mask is not a, a musical, Alid. What are you talking about? That was I'm, terrible. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mask. Mask was Cher. Cher was in that. Hey, uh, uh, Ali, shush. Ali, <laughs> Ethan's talking. Oh, what is it, Ethan? <laughs> right. <laughs> favorite, <laughs> favorite moments. <laughs> Cher was great. Right. I, I apologize, Cher. You, you were amazing. Right. You were amazing in everything. Okay. <laughs> right. Onward from share. Anyway. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> right. Anyways, favorite moments. Um, I did like the build up. I liked the suspense to it. Like the, I mean, yeah, it is slow, but I like the build up to it. I like the, the, the you know, you're wondering what's wrong with him. Um, I actually quite liked. Uh, one scene that wasn't. Well, I don't know if it has been mentioned, but is when they're watching the. Uh, the recording of what happened on the ship. That was pretty creepy. And, uh, you know, oh, yes, I like that. 
remember that. when they were walking at slow motion like in space because of the uh, gravity and all that but i love there was something very quite jarring about that i liked how it just shows you and you're not sure what it is that gets onto the ship i liked that um it's already been mentioned i liked the bit with the girl because there was yeah, that had very Frankenstein vibes to it. And I kept watching and thinking, please tell me he's not going to kill her. Because <laughs> you do, you're like, this is like Frankenstein. Don't tell me he's going to kill her like what he did. But yeah, you know, it, it, you, you could see the inspirations and stuff. But yeah, it was, um, and how he just whacks the doll's head off and mm. runs. Um, I did like, I agree with Jake. I loved the, um, quite surprisingly for that time as well, I loved the deaths how the bodies where they find half their faces torn and that was pretty gory for something like from that time actually i was thinking oh they went far with that <laughs> for back then oh yeah oh 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 <laughs> <laughs> better than this one oh <laughs> um, but i liked that um i did like um, <laughs> how, um I, I thought it was quite uh, the, uh, the bit in the zoo, obviously, um, was very well done, how they had that look, you know, and it was creepy where you just see him in the bushes with those sort of creepy glowing eyes in the bush and he slowly mm. comes out. And I liked how he, I, I did like it when, well, they find is that like, you're almost like a blob, ain't he? He's just a blob and how he mm. breaks out the glass and, that reminded me of a Dalek, like a tentacle looking up and stuff like that. Um, and the whole bit in the cathedral was very good. I thought that was just very well done. Um, yeah, I think a lot of like a lot of the terror and stuff, where he starts to break out, where it all kicks off from there. A lot, pretty much all of that, I really enjoyed. I'd say those are my favourite moments. I think. We got we got through that without any interruptions, really. That's brilliant. Um, but he thinks it's slow at the beginning. But I said I liked I like it doesn't have to be fast. I like it slow. Yes, I was okay. Like, yes, the build up. <laughs> well, we've got, we've got to, we, yeah, we haven't been to Alex and Susan, have we yet? So over no, to the. Been to They're watching Doctor Who. Are they? How rude. <laughs> Um, okay, so my favorite moments are um, I liked the the part where um, where he's I lo I liked the the part in the in the zoo that was that was really uh, you know lots of little body horror things as they are looking at all the dead animals and stuff. And I thought you were an animal lover. I am an animal lover. But there was body horror because it's a horror <laughs> movie. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, and I also liked it when he st stopped eating animals and started eating people. Oh. I thought that was that was also really good. And I thought the actor, what's his name? Hang on, we'll get it back up there a sec. Um, um, the actor Richard World Wordsworth, who we haven't actually mentioned by name, did a really good job as um, Victor Caroon. So yeah, that was that was quite good. And the other part that I liked is um, I like the end when he's when he's walking away and he's saying, "I'm I, I better start over." Start all over again. Quater Mass is a Quater Mass is a dork, and then and I just think that he's a he's a total nerd, and and he's just you know. Anyway, you know it's all gonna go wrong again, don't you? Yeah, that's the, yeah. That was the scary part for me. So, so okay, that those are my favorite tears, Alex. Yeah, no. Um, again, this is one of the uh, you know this is one of the good stories of film sci-fi of the fifties. You know, the us versus them, the creepy alien, the you know gross implications of body horror and more. 
and well before they had all the wonderful effects to make it look really, really gross, but they hinted at it here or more than that. And, uh, you know, that's good. I've, I've watched quarter mass many times. I, I like, I like going through the genres and taking a look at the early stuff before everything was so expensive and pretty and computer generated and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a good thing. Um, it's great to see this style. It's great to see the, the origination of it. You know, uh, I liked how tight everything was. I liked the effects. Uh, so not everything has to cost a million dollars, but I've said that a billion times before, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've liked most of the versions of this character. There was only a few and it's not this one. There's only a few versions that I kind of like. But, uh, yeah, it's supposed to start out slow. It's called building suspense. It's not supposed to be fast. Long as it isn't two hours to get to the point, though. But, uh, but this one's faster than that. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah. I'll tell you what I did like. Is it Karun, the actor who played the astronaut? The, the way they made him out, uh, you know, the, the makeup. Just, he's, you know, you know, they said his, his structure had changed and all that. The makeup on his face, the, the, the all the veins on his shoulder and all like that. Um, the scene where he's in the hospital, just there, stuck there, with that sort of pounding music, and then he just hits the cactus. That is just the, you know, one of those scenes. You go, wow, what, what's going here, going on here? Though? It's one of those brilliant scenes. Um, and yeah, quite a mess is a douchebag. He he doesn't care. This experiment failed. He's just going to start it again. What, what you know? He doesn't care what's happened to all these people. He's just going to carry on with his experiments. That's what a douche. Um, what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find out. You'll find out. You quit too. Um, <laughs> God, what else does he get up to? <laughs> um, yeah, all in all, it's 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 a good atmospheric movie, um, and I, I'm glad I'm glad movies have borrowed from this because you know without it there'll be no, no other sort of movies. Be, no, I'm getting distracted. Beef Dad's doing that with his head. Always, <laughs> he looks like you look like the tall man now from uh, Phantasm. Um, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that yeah, that's my. Uh, Boy. Um, so scores. Let's shall we shall we go to Ali first to get him over with? Yeah, let's get over and done with. Over with. On, Score Alid. on the door is number four. Oh, okay. No, it's Better it's than I thought. that because it rounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Score on the door is a number. So I can't use that one, so I'll go with four. Um, Ethan, what's your score? I'm, I'm actually going to give this some, um, yeah, very as you as you said, atmospheric. I love, adore atmospheric movies, yeah. and I actually, yeah, it's something about this when I watch movies like oh, movies or TV shows like this, your know, black and white stuff. It's something just so nostalgic that hits me well in the heart, and I really just get hooked onto them. So I'm going to give this actually a nine. A nine out of ten. Not bad score. Uh, Beef Dad? Yeah, the score from Alive is 7.5. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, Susie? Actually, I, I was thinking about when I'm thinking of score, how to score things, I kind of wait till my gut feels good about it. And I, I had already settled on 7.5, so I'm agreeing with Deep Dad. It's not a bad score. Um, Alex is Susan. In my, in my humble estimation of scientific integrity, I think that I must give this a uh, seven and even... Natural. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll give this a uh, 8.5. Like I said, it's also early, so I'm giving it a higher score because, again, they you know they were one of the first five that, that set the style. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, who are we on? Oh, Jake. I'm not going to miss you, Jake. Go on. Over to you. I adored it. I think it is atmospheric masterpiece. True, it's time. Set, so I'm going to give it a 10. Hey! Whoa! Oh. Hi, Grace and Jake. Oh. I've got a question. There we go. <laughs> yes, I would have happily have just had the man be infected without the big monster. Really? Like Where that. has the real Jake gone? Who uh, has kidnapped oh, the real no, Jake? Darling. No, darling, I just have taste. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, oh. dear. No, you don't, dear. <laughs> <laughs> that is one gun My shot. dear That's darling my heart. heart. You, know, you killed all the unicorns too. That's why there's no unicorns anymore. The man's by your curtains taste is something you definitely don't have. Oh, little bit chewy Ooh. now, darling. <laughs> oh, unzip yourself and go back in the field. <laughs> and, and, and munch on some grass where you belong. Meow, 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 meow. Go, <laughs> moo. Calm down, children. Calm down. Um, I'm going to give this an eight. It's um, it's a good classic movie. The whale's lost its calf, I think. It's a good classic movie. Just ignore ignore that over there. Ooh, um, that sad, pathetic little man. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, Jake sat there. Pay no attention to the man in front of the curtain. <laughs> The mucky cans. Um, Ranky old town. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, right. you guys, thanks for joining me talking about Quatermass experiment. Um, you guys out there, let us know what you thought of the movie. Let us know what you thought of this cast, especially what what you thought of Alid's dressing gown, because ah, to be honest, I think oh. it's. Oh. <laughs> um, hey, that, well, what 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 you wear? Bloody hell, you look like you climbed out the fucking charity <laughs> shop. <laughs> I, never, I never wear a dressing gown on a cast. Oh, the bloody charity bin. That, that just loaded it on your cast. Um, but yeah, please, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. And if you want to join the cast, just message us and, you know, we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. And if you want to be notified of what videos we put up, you know, ding that bell, subscribe to us. So, exactly. So until next time, we'll, you know, take care, be safe, stay indoors for now. And, you know, we'll see you in a, a week's time for whatever we're going to do. So bye for now. Message Ethan. Watch <laughs> side Message Ethan for funny you know, sound don't effects. Miss, don't message Ethan, he's busy. He's caring for the people. Don't message Ethan. People like Jake. He's a healthcare worker. Yeah, he is! Stay at home. Oh, thanks, guys. And on that note, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>